Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm on a brand new boat from Grady White, the 281 Coastal Explorer. Very interesting thought processes and design features went into this boat, and I want to go over all of them as I do my full features inspection and performance evaluation. Now, this is a Grady White, so that means fishing first, and we can't get away from that, nor do we want to get away from that, so let's look at the fishing features. In the cockpit, 38-gallon live well, over to the starboard side, and then next to that, is a sink, self-draining, fresh water right alongside. Underneath, storage drawer and then tackle storage. There's more storage plus a raw water wash down. There's still more storage to the starboard side and then drawer storage in the front. So that means every single piece of usable space is taken up for storage on this. Nothing is wasted. Just above, rod holders, tool storage, rod holders at the trailing edge of the hardtop, and rod holders, that's a big thing going around this boat. They're all along the cap rail. And we've also got a combination of rod holders and cup holders. I'd actually like to see these be the combination rod holders and cup holders in every one of these positions. Now let's move to the transom, and a lot of clever thought went on in this area. You might not think so, but check this out. First of all, seven feet, two inches by two feet, two inches. We've got diamond non-skid, so it's all a nice casting platform. Now, because we have the new Yamaha engines with the integrated digital electric steering, we don't have an engine well, so we in effect have a lower casting platform. Swing the seat backs out to the stern, and now we've even got a little bolster to lean against. But so much more went into the thinking of this. All too often, we'll see where you've just got a flip up bench. And that ends up being okay, but your seats end up being so low because the platform needs to be low. You're sitting in an uncomfortable position with your knees way up close. The cushions have to be thinner so that we don't have a high platform. This is a much better solution and I really like the way Grady White's thought it out. Gets even better. Hatches come up on gas assist struts. In the center, there's an 18 gallon live well. Now this is insulated so we can also use it as a cooler. And then we've got storage bins to both sides. These bins are removable so we can get access into the bilge area. Now Grady White isn't in the power pole business, but they can certainly be added on aftermarket. We've got a safety factor of 21 inch high bulwarks. The fishing features continue forward with a huge casting platform, six feet, 10 inches wide on average by eight feet, 10 inches fore and aft going onto this platform in the back. But more importantly, as I said, clever thought process went into the design of this boat all the way through. Instead of getting a big step up 18 inches, we've got two nine inch steps leading us to this foredeck. I don't know why everybody doesn't do that, but Grady White certainly does. All diamond non-skid in this whole section up here. We've got two inserts. This one here also can have a pedestal so it becomes a table. This one is optional, so now we're extending the platform all the way aft on top of this coffin box. We'll get into that in just a moment. We've got storage underneath the two forward compartments. And again, clever features. Notice how we've got these little plates right here. You can see those all around. You probably noticed them at the back casting platform as well. Well, what's going on with them is they are actually brackets that support the pneumatic struts that hold the hatch open. So these are made for the long haul. You just don't put bolts in there. You actually back those bolts up. And those plates are custom made by Grady White. They have bolts welded onto them. So this boat is made to last a lifetime. And of course, this is a Grady White. These aren't just storage compartments. They're 70 quart insulated storage compartments, self-draining overboard. Now that's an important feature because everything on this boat is made to drain overboard. It's not just a self-draining cockpit that has scuppers in the back. Every compartment, every storage area, every drink holder, everything are draining and made to drain overboard. As with the power poles, Grady White isn't in the trolling motor business, but they do pre-rig the boat for it. The coffin box, 296 quart, insulated, and it's got a removable divider. A couple of interesting features that separate this T-top from the competition. Grady White doesn't mount them to the deck, so we don't have supports going all the way down, taking up valuable deck space. This gives us a full 22 inches of side deck clearance. More importantly, notice how these supports are inside of the windshield. Nice and clean and trim looking, and they also have integrated handrails for when we're operating the boat at the helm. And notice we've also got tracks so we can add wings to the side of the console for operating on those chilly days. 
And then we've got the standard T-top, which I mentioned during the fishing features because we've got spreader lights both fore and aft, and it's pre-rigged for outriggers. Undergrown rod storage will hold rods up to 10 feet in length. I'd like to see some integrated tow rails as well. Now after I spend the morning fishing, then I'm going to be bringing the family out in the afternoon. Easily converts into a family fun boat. Take a look at this. We put cushions on. Now we've got two forward-facing loungers. The side cushions add seating, plus electrically actuated seat backs give us two more lounges, one to each side. And I like that we can stop this in any position rather than bring it up and put it into one position that's been decided by somebody in a desk far away from where I am. One change I would make, however, is the switch that brings the seat back up. I'd like to see that moved a little bit forward so that it's within reach of the seated position. Not only is the seat remarkably comfortable, but there's also a full-length grab rail, also in a comfortable position. And look, right where my hand drops is a beverage holder. All of this can be under the protection of the Easy Up bow shade, supported by carbon fiber stanchions. At seven feet, two inches, we're looking at four across, maybe five good friends. And remember what I talked about earlier, how it's not a flip up seat back. So all of the seats are at a comfortable height with your feet comfortably on the deck. More importantly, the good thinking that goes on at Grady White, this seat that flipped out before now can flip in and we've got a side facing lounger. We can also have an electrically extendable shade coming out from the trailing edge of the hardtop. And if we have a single engine, we can get a ski tow arch. If we have the twin engines, we can get a ski pylon. To the port hand side, a standard feature, this sport deck that makes an ideal platform. We've seen this before on other boats, but Grady White has a different take on it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's electrically actuated. That's something we don't normally see. And second, it's standard. There's a ladder that attaches to it and it stores right alongside. We can use this for hauling in a big catch, even if that big catch is your kid. Now let's look at the head compartment. More clever engineering going on in here. Take a look. Side access, the door has a handle on the inside, plus a mirror held open by a magnetic catch. There's a grab handle as I reach in, and then there's a light switch right inside the entrance. You're not searching for a dome light. Just hit the switch and there's indirect lighting inside. Five feet, four inches of overhead clearance leaves four feet of sitting headroom. Cherry storage racks, both high and low. This one has a plexiglass to the back of it. This one, cargo netting to the back of it. There's easy access behind the console for installations and easy access to the bilge area. I'd like to see a waste basket down here, but that's easy to install right into this area. Up overhead, there's a solar powered vent. I appreciate the thoughtful touch of bringing the bow rail all the way back so it's convenient to grab on when you're coming out of the head compartment. Safety is always a paramount concern at Grady White. Notice that we've got a grab rail as we move forward through the 22 inch wide side decks. There's a grab rail up overhead underneath the T-top and that ends right as we can transition to the bow rail. This tops out at 33 inches. This rail is also surprisingly comfortable to use when you're getting in and out of the boat from a fixed pier. Additional safety features that go into every Grady White are also present on this boat. For example, we've got the overboard drains that we talked about all through the boat. We've also got foam flotation that's only required on boats 20 feet or less. Grady White puts it on every boat in the lineup. Now let's move on to the operational features and we'll start right here with the engines. We can get a single 425 horsepower Yamaha or dual 300 horsepower. In both the single and twin installations, we get freshwater flush ports so we can flush out the engines for those saltwater boaters. A lot of clever thought went into the helm console as well. For example, flat panel gives us room for dual 16 inch screens that are supplied by the dealer. Grady isn't in the electronics business. Notice also that the switches are down low rather than up high. They don't need to be in the line of sight, the screens do. So move the switches down and the screens up. Very clever. Yamaha engine display right in the center, just ahead of the digital engine controls. The steering wheel is 316 grade stainless steel. It's got non-skid on both the top and bottom and a steering knob and it's mounted to a tilt base. The compass is mounted into the center of the console. I'd like to see that in line with the steering wheel. There's a large space up front for putting your stuff and it's padded at the bottom. Up above, we've got an e-box. In this case, we've got a dealer installed VHF. 
And notice that we've got a wraparound acrylic windshield that goes outside of the supports for the T-top and not very much distortion at the corner. So nicely done there. Also, I noticed that it goes all the way up. I also appreciate that Grady White includes a windshield wiper as standard. There's a Fusion stereo package with connectivity right alongside. That connectivity is also in close proximity to the beverage holders that are probably going to be holding your cell phone. There's zippered storage up above. Overhead, there are LED lights that cycle between red, white, and blue. How patriotic. The seats are part of the Elite Lean Bar package. They've got flip armrests, flip bolsters, and they adjust fore and aft. There's a molded footrest at the bottom of the console. I'd like to see a flip-down footrest underneath the observer seat. Fire extinguisher has dedicated storage in the port side bulwarks. Now let's take a look at the ground tackle, and this is on an elevated platform, so there's no bending or stooping over to get to it. It's at an easy and comfortable height. Open up the hatch, it's held open by a gas assist strut. There's a standard windlass inside, supporting the anchor that goes through the stem. Controls are right alongside the open hatch, and there are also additional controls, of course, at the helm. Fully forward, pop-up nav light. Eight-inch pull-up cleats, there are three to each side. The Grady Weight 281 Coastal Explorer has a length overall of 27 feet 7 inches, a beam of 9 feet 4 inches, and a draft of 19 inches. With an empty weight of 5,650 pounds, 70% fuel, 3 people, and test power, we had an estimated test weight of 8,103 pounds. With the twin 300 horsepower Yamaha outboards, turning 15 and a quarter by 19 props and run up to 6,000 RPM, our speed topped out at an average 55 miles per hour. Best cruise was found to be at 3,400 RPM and 32.1 miles per hour. At that speed, the 14.7 gallon per hour fuel burn worked out to be 2.2 miles per gallon and a range of 316 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 160 gallon total fuel capacity. In acceleration tests, we reached planing speed in an average 3 seconds, continued through 20 miles per hour in 5.5, 30 and 7.5, and onward past 40 in 9.6 seconds. There's just so much to like on a Grady White, and at the top of the list probably is handling. It feels like such a strong and sturdy boat. It's strong construction, and you can really feel it all the way through the boat. We don't have many waves here. I mean, it's almost flat calm, but crossing our wakes, crossing the wake of the camera boat, things along those lines. No pounding, no hard hull slap, unless I was going full speed. Then you can get it to hit, but that's not how you want to drive this boat. You want to back off into cruising speed, and at that speed, she's able to push right through the waves and throw them aside and keep a nice dry ride, thanks to that huge Carolina flare. Putting it into turns, she leans nicely into the turn with a gentle roll so no one's getting thrown over to the side and the centrifugal force isn't pushing you to the outside of the turn. You're more planting yourself into the boat. She'll lose about two, three miles an hour during the turn, which isn't bad at all, and can easily be accommodated by adding a little bit of throttle, and then when you straighten out, bring that throttle back a bit into your cruise attitude, and off you go. As far as trim is concerned, she does like trim. Bring the trim gauge up to the point where there's only about three left showing, and that's the easiest way to do it, and that puts her into a nice cruise attitude. Trim tabs, pretty much only need those for a um, uneven balance of weight, uneven distribution of weight. I didn't need it for performance at all, never touched them. I'm surprised by how many thoughtful features there are in this boat and how clever it's laid out. Mostly though, how they fit so many things into a boat without making it seem cramped and crowded. All of it just works so well on the 281 Coastal Explorer from Grady White. And that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.